Hi everyone, thank you for watching today. So in this video we're going to be creating this oval easel card using the gorgeous candy cane um, stamps and dies from Chloe's Creative Cards. I've just applied the Nouveau Drops so they are still drying. So I'm trying not to move it around too much but you'll see from the pictures um, how it's displayed. So I'm going to talk you through the pieces that I've already prepared off camera. Um, anything else that I use uh, going along the process, I'll explain at the time. Um, so I'll start with my card base. So I've got some oval nestable dies. These are the ones from Creative Craft Products. Um, I've used a card blank and I've got the folded edge here at the top. Um, I've placed my die so it's just slightly overhanging that fold um, and I've cut the card base there. So as you can see we haven't got a complete oval so I've cut an additional piece then to attach to that and then it'll fit just on top and complete that full shape then. So the size of this oval is just under 6 by seven so i'm going to make this into an easel so i am going to score across the center here um, and then this will attach to the front edge so the next size down i've cut this silver mirror card and i've also got the same to go on the inside and we'll need to do some adjustments so that nests inside there like so I'm then um, going to cut another oval in the next size down. I'm going to create my own pattern paper um, because I didn't have anything in my stash that was suitable for this. So I'm going to cut lots of strips of cardstock in pink, silver and white. And I'm going to create my own sort of candy cane stripe. And then I'll cut that to match or to nest in the next size down. And then I've got two white pieces then that will sort of show off that pattern paper but also give us a focal point um, for the candy canes that I'll be using. So I'm going to emboss these panels as well. So I've just got a bit of extra texture and interest to the card. And then as the focal point I've got these two candy canes that will sit lovely inside the oval there and I've used I have used these in a previous video but if you haven't seen them it's the Chloe's Creative Cards candy cane and I did similar to what I did in my last video where, where I heat emboss using silver embossing powder I've then colored in the pink sections using an alcohol marker and then I've gone over the top then in pink and white glitter and the glitter that I've used is from Chloe's Creative Cards and this is the Sparklicious Glitter and the white is the Chunky Crystallina and the pink is the Pink Rose. And then I've done the same with the bow. I've coloured that in with my alcohol marker just in case I miss any spots um, when applying the glitter. And then um, I think it looks really pretty. <laughs> I just love this colour. So I'm going to do a few more um, pieces of preparation off camera now and then I'll come back to you and we'll sort of start to assemble everything together. We'll make the pattern paper, we'll attach all the layers um, and attach the sentiment. So next I'm going to start with the easel base and all I do is line up the score line in a track in my scoreboard so I'm just lining that up to the first score line just to make sure that we're following the same scored edge and um, this is coming in as I said just over uh, seven inches so I'm just scoring in the center there at three and a half and you just want to mountain fold that and then you have your easel base Next I'm going to add glue along this panel only and add that additional full oval over the top. 
So this is a, an all-purpose glue. It's a solvent base, so you shouldn't have any warping on your cards. Um, as I said, I'm using Kalal, but you could use um, other brands. I'm just lining that up with the edge, making sure that it's in the centre and all the edges marry up. I'm just going to pop this open. I'm going to take my silver mirror card and make sure that I've got it in the correct orientation, as I said. Now I'm going to flip this over just to give me an idea. And I'm going to take a ruler and a pencil. She says if you can find a pencil and I'm going to use the scored edge there and make sure the rulers follow in the same line and just draw across that and I'm going to snip that off like so and then everything should marry up so I'm going to attach this next on the inside of my card, again using some Kalal glue. So I'm happy with that, I'm just going to close it back up and then attach the silver panel to the front. Next I'm going to work on the pattern paper. So I've already gone ahead and I've got a piece of white card stock and I've attached double sided um, adhesive sheet to one piece. I'm just going to do the other one on camera and just show you um, how I sort of get um, the sheet attached without sort of any air bubbles in it. Um, so all I'm going to do is remove the backing. Just to reveal some of that adhesive and fold the backing sheet over. I'm then going to take my piece of cardstock and just line that up and press that down. So I'm just going to flip this over and make sure that adhesive sheet is attached. And then slowly peel off the backing from behind. You can use a bone folder for this if you wish. Just to, to take out any of those air bubbles. And you sort of want to pull the backing paper at the same time moving the bone folder down the sheet of paper and then just do it to the, to the edge of your cardstock and then press that down again with your bone folder and you can see where the edge meets and just cut that away so you've still got the backing paper and you've, you've got some scraps there as well if you need them. So the size of the cardstock that I have is to fit the oval pieces. So this measures um, just over six by just over, over seven. So this oval will sit nicely inside there. Now you could do this in two ways. You could add all of your um, strips onto the cardstock now and then attach your die and send it through your die cutting machine and cut everything at once. Um, it will be going through two different layers of cardstock and adhesive sheet. Um, so if you need to add a shim, you could do that as well just to make sure it goes through the entire cardstock or you can die cut the sheet now as it is and then add the strips and trim around it to maintain that shape. So I'm just debating on which method I'm going to use. So I've decided to die cut this now before adding any of the strips so that I don't sort of have any wasted of cardstock there. 
I'm just going to tape that in place and run that through my die cutter machine for both pieces and then I'll come back to you. So I've cut several pieces of cardstock. I've cut some silver mirror card and I've cut that to one eighth of an inch. I've then got some white card which is half an inch and some pink cardstock that measures a quarter of an inch. The pink cardstock is from Creative Craft Products. This is Euphoric Pink. So this is the new cardstock um, part of the Essentials range. And I'm going to shortly peel off the backing paper and I'm going to start adding these strips to the oval like so. So rather than place it in the center, if you have it sort of towards one edge like so, you can trim those off and reuse those again. So I'm going to leave about one eighth of an inch between each strip so it exposes that adhesive and then I'm going to add some glitter over the top so it'll fill in those gaps then. And I'm going to use the chunky crystallina on this um, on this panel. I'm just going to remove the backing paper from one oval. You can use this as well if you like to hold um, your oval in place and this will peel off easily then so you don't have anything attached. Make sure it's the sort of the shiny side um, you'll be able to feel the difference. The top one will be sort of more smooth and the bottom one that will easily peel off this um, will have sort of more of a slippery surface then. It's the best way to describe it. I'm just going to pop that down there. So I'm just going to start adding these now at a slight angle and as I said overhang just slightly on one side. So I'm just going to work my way along now and attach all of the strips to this panel and then I'll come back to you before adding the glitter. So I've gone ahead and I've attached all the strips to the oval. I'm just going to turn it over and use my bone folder just to press those pieces in place. Pay particular attention to the um, edge and now I'm going to trim around it with my scissors. So there's my oval now trimmed and I'm just going to go over the top of it. Oh, if I can get this glitter open. So make sure you're using a scrap piece to catch any of the excess glitter. So I'm just going to sprinkle it over the whole piece. And then you want to just go in with your finger and just push that glitter into the adhesive and then that will just fill in any of the gaps between the strips. And then I'm just going to use my bone folder just to push that glitter down and again tap off any excess. So there's the pattern paper that we've created using our own just plain cardstock. You could emboss this now as well if you like. Um, I think that looks really pretty and it'll just um, tie in nicely with the candy cane. So we've got the silver, the pink and white in that as well. I think it just pulls everything together. So I'm going to go ahead now and do the same for the um, the additional piece. I am going to line this up to my card base um, just to make sure that that sits nicely inside there. So I'm just going to have to trim a little bit off the top like we did with the mirror piece. So 
go again. Just using the ruler to draw a line to trim at and take that away. So I'll go off camera now and do the same with this piece and then that will be ready to attach on the inside there like so. So now that both of my panels are prepared I'm going to attach these flat to my card base to the mirror card stock. So one on the outside and one on the inside. So I've embossed my oval panels to sit in the centre of these two pieces. However, I've changed my mind. <laughs> so I have embossed this with the Made to Surprise Linen Embossing Folder. Um, and I do like it on the front of the card, but I feel like it takes away from that candy cane stripe that we've created. Um, I'm just not too certain on it. So I've cut another oval in vellum and that's going to sit on the front there. I'm going to pop the candy cane up onto some foam and also the bow. Um, and it sort of just moots down that background behind the candy canes just to help them pop on the card. And then for the inside, and this will be my stopper then to hold my oval in place, I've stamped Have the Sweetest Christmas and this is from the Made to Surprise a Paper Craft Society Box 24 I believe it is and um, this isn't available any longer. Um, I think there are similar stamps in the uh, Made to Surprise magazine as well so if you've got those you could use those as an alternative. So that's going to sit there and will be popped up hold that easel in place. So let me know what you think. If I make the right decision with the vellum or should I have stuck with the white panels? So to help me attach the vellum, first of all I'm going to pop the candy cane up onto some foam and attach it to the vellum oval. And then what I'll do is I'll flip this over once they're attached and I'll use the back of this then to add the glue so that it hides everything. So I've attached the candy canes to the vellum and I'm just going behind it now to add the glue behind those pieces to fix it in place onto my panel. I've also gone ahead and attached the bow. I've doubled up on the foam adhesive just to make that pop against the candy canes. And now I'm just going to add the sentiment. So there's the final card. I'll just pop it into its shape briefly just to show you because I don't want to move it around just too much because of those nouveau drops. I like to give them at least 24 hours to set. Um, sometimes if you put some weight on top of them they can sort of flatten slightly so once you've added them um, just apply them to a flat surface and let them dry so i think the card has turned out lovely i hope the recipient likes it it's pink it's silver it's glittery and i think they will uh, love this style of card so let me know what you think in the comments below. As usual, I'll link any of the products used in today's video in the description box below. Once again, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.